So I think I'll go through the first reading line by line. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the longest reading. But the, the gospel, just very brief reflection on the gospel. The gospel is a famous story and very, very rich and complex. And I read a, several commentaries on it today. And one of the commentaries, uh, you know, was not sympathetic to the woman at all. You know, it was, it was, it was like, you know, adultery has a lot of consequences. And what about her husband? What about her kids? What about the community? This, that, and the next thing. And uh, to not lose sight of, of the whole reason for the law in the first place. But then at the same time, uh, the, the, so that we could put that commentary over there and I'll put this commentary over here. You know, Jesus is, is coming, his, his, this very famous line, and I hope you all have a version of this line memorized. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Because I think that's the whole point. Yes, the woman's sin, call, sin call, has consequences. And the more serious the sin is, the more serious the consequences are. And those consequences unravel a culture and unravel families. But we don't get to go around killing people by stoning them to death because of their sin. Because we would have some stones thrown at us too, you know. The old, this is, hopefully you can see the relation here. Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That leaves you with a village with no eyes and no teeth, you know, <laughs> because eventually everybody's going to do something wrong, you know. And so let the one among you who was out sin throw the first stone at her. And then the other line that we cannot forget neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. Jesus is going to be incredibly clear that there are consequences to sin, even eternal consequences to sin. But Jesus came to teach, to lead, to heal, to transform, to call to repentance. The last point I'll make about this is I used to read this gospel that the elders went away first because they were the first ones to figure out they had some sin, right? But then I read a commentary today. It's like, no, the elders were the first ones to figure out the gig is up, that Jesus has, Jesus has flipped it right back in our face because chances are they thought they were innocent. Chances are they didn't think they had any sin because St. Paul says explicitly his attitude about himself before he had his encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus was, I was blameless in the eyes of the law. And so many of those men probably thought they were blameless or the crowd, whoever they were, thought they were blameless in the eyes of the law, but they weren't there for that. They were there to accuse Jesus. And when they figured out this is not going to work, they were like, okay, off we go. We go hatch our next plot. And they, well, we know that the next, they, they finally got their way. But nonetheless, go and sin no more.